Hi, this is Mr. Gooden again. Here's the bandsaw. I'm going to teach you a little bit about the bandsaw. There's a few setup things that you're going to have to do. Um, the first thing I want to talk about with the bandsaw is, first of all, it's a really easy machine to use. It has its jobs that are a little bit nicer than, than other machines. One of the reasons for that is because it's a band that goes around in a big circle. So open up the cover, you can see the, the top wheel and there's a bottom wheel. The band goes around that. And it's always cutting down, so you don't have to worry about your wood jumping up like you would on some other machines. One of the jobs that the bandsaw does a really good job at is cutting irregular shapes or even circles. Things that you have to curve, go around. It does cut straight. We do have a miter gauge to do that with. But if you're, there's, uh, like for example, the miter saw would be a better machine to cut things at 90 degrees instead of the bandsaw. But sometimes, just taking a little bit off, we use the bandsaw. Another reason why we'd use the bandsaw is if we have a piece less than three inches that we can't cut on the miter saw, we would want to use the bandsaw for that. All right, the one setup that there is involved with the bandsaw, we brought the camera on back so you could see um, the knob that we're going to use to set up. But we have to adjust the blade guard. And this piece of sheet metal that goes around the blade is what we call the blade guard. The blade guard is attached to the guide post, which we need to loosen up this knob right here to raise and lower the guide post or the blade guard. And what we don't want is all this blade to be seen. We want that covered up as much as possible. So one of our safety rules says to adjust the blade guard to within one fourth of an inch of your work. So what I do is I lower it down, push the guide post down so it's touching my work, and then I will raise it slightly, tighten my knob back up, and now I know that my piece can slide easily underneath the guide post. Okay, before I start cutting, I just want to finish going through the safety rules. We just got them covering one with the guide post. Uh, there's two that are very similar, and one says to keep the, the table clear of small scraps, because when you're using a bandsaw, a lot of times there's a lot of small scraps, so keep it clear. And then along with that is to never use your hands to clear the table. Use a brush. A lot of times the scraps are small enough, you can just blow them off the table, or if you have your workpiece that you're using, what I like to do is just go ahead and push the scraps off of the table with my workpiece. Some more safety rules to cover is to make sure that when we're pushing, we never want our fingers or thumbs directly in line with the blade. Now sometimes it's going to look like it's directly in line, but I'm not pushing in towards the blade, and that's the key. So if I'm doing corners and I'm rotating my block, my thumb might be directly behind the blade, but I'm not pushing into the blade, and that's kind of the key on that safety rule. The other safety rule is to make sure you have relief cuts, and I will get into what relief cuts are, but basically we're going to have, we're going to make extra cuts to relieve the twisting tension of the blade. That's what a relief cut is. And then the last safety rule that I want to cover with the bandsaw is to not back out of a cut deeper than the width of the blade. If we look at our blade, our blade is about a quarter to three eighths wide. And so once I cut and I'm cutting in that deep, I do not want to pull my wood back out when the machine is on. If I realize that, you know what, I'm making a mistake, I'm crossing my line, I need to back out, then shut the machine off then pull it out. Do not pull out, pull your block off out of the blade um, when it's deeper than the width of the blade because what you can do is pull the blade off of these wheels. Okay, now I'm going to cut this half circle out and I'll explain what I'm going to do first and then I'll go ahead and do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to make a relief cut. I told you I'd talk about what a relief cut is. I'm going to come in and basically just make a straight cut come in here, make a straight cut, and then I'm going to stop. I'm going to shut off my machine, pull it out, and then I'm going to do the same thing coming this way. And now I have this piece is going to be gone, and then I can make other relief cuts in here. So when I make my cuts coming along this line, all these small pieces are going to fall away. 
All right, so like I said, I'm gonna come in here, make that first relief cut. Now I don't want to get really close. I don't want to cut on my line. I want to keep my line. That's really important. If you cut your line or cut past your line, then you lose your reference point. Now you can see that fell away. I didn't need to shut the machine off, but because I'm talking, I just shut the machine off. Now I'm going to take my wood and go ahead and kick that off to the side. Now I can come in here and add a few more relief cuts, and this time I don't need to shut the machine off because I'm not going in deeper than the width of the blade. Okay, so now I have my relief cuts in, and all I'm going to do now is come around, and once I start cutting here, this little chunk is going to fall off and then this chunk is going to fall off and so on. Now I don't need to make it nice and smooth because we have a spindle sander that once you get this cut you can go ahead and sand that inside smooth. So you don't need to worry about uh, making a nice smooth cut. And the one thing I want to point out is that you, I don't want to cross my line. I want to stay on one side of the line. Okay, so there's a couple things that I did there that we had talked about earlier. I kept my table clear of scraps. I did not use my fingers to clear the scraps. I blew them off or I used my piece of wood. And I used a couple more relief cuts than I thought I would need. And you can see in here that this is kind of rough and jagged, but I did not cross my line. And that's important because now I can just take this over to the spindle sander and I go ahead and spin or sand the inside of this really nice and smooth. Okay, there you have it. That's the bandsaw. We covered the safety rules. I showed you a demonstration on how to cut a circle using relief cuts. Showed you how to use the machine safely with, with removing the scraps, not touching the table and getting my fingers close to the blade. If you have any questions using the bandsaw, you can ask Mrs. Heisey or myself. Thanks.